All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot, and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're gonna be talking about Michaela Schifrin. Now, Michaela was an extremely young athlete when she first started her career, so today I'm gonna go all the way back, 11 years ago, when she first got her first World Cup slalom win, as a teenager, I believe, if that's right, if my math is right. 11 years ago, Oh my God, I was 23, fresh out of college, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, <laughs> and Michaela was a teenager already winning her first World Cup win. Now, I've known people who know Michaela. I don't actually know her. I'm probably just too old to know her. But she graduated from the Burke Mountain Academy program. I'm native to Burke, like Burke is a town in Vermont and I'm native to there. <laughs> I'm from East Burke. So when I tell people I'm from Burke, they go, oh, you're from Burke Mountain Academy. And I go, no, 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 no. There's like actually people who live there. So I did the Burke Mountain Academy junior program, which was also very intense. I had family that went to Burke Mountain Academy, but I am not an alumni of that high school. I went to a different high school. Um, so I don't know Michaela directly, but I know people that know her. Um, once removed or something like that. And from what I've heard, like in real life, she's a fairly cool person. But again, I, I don't know her personally, so all of this commentary is just as like a spectator. I don't really know her, I just know where she's from and her background. And I know kind of out of, if she came here as a teenager, she would have been coming directly from Burke. So I know the culture and I'm familiar with it. So I've never watched this, Actually, no, I was. <laughs> I worked with Scary Sea Magazine around that time. Oh my God, that was such a bad job. My brain like wiped it from my memory. Okay, yeah, I do remember this. I don't remember this run specifically. Maybe the file in my head is just corrupt. But anyway, I'm gonna be watching it for the first-ish time. We'll see if it jogs my memory. But Michaela, I do remember, was fundamentally a fantastic slalom skier. Obviously she still is, and I love watching slalom, it's my favorite event, so I think this will be a treat. And so, without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, and here we go. The young American, Michaela Schifrin. Twice she has been on the podium and in slalom. I'm talking to her. Oh my God, look at that picture. Oh God. I mean, she's a high schooler, so whatever, but just whoever was the publicist, God, get her a better headshot than that. Uh, I didn't see any scene yet. <laughs> just distracted. She's got like that 70s big bulky hair. Okay, whatever, that doesn't matter. For coaches, and, and we see it, the word is solid, absolutely solid in giant slalom, but a... Ooh, a little hiccup there, like the skis kind of got out from under her. It was fine because her skis were pointed on the fall line, but this announcer was so busy talking, <laughs> didn't even catch anything technical there. Ugh. I know that sometimes they're really good. Like sometimes they get Bodie Miller, Ted Ligeti, Peekaboo Street. They get good sports commentators when they're athletes. But a lot of time the ski commentators, I'm like, is this the first time watching skiing? <laughs> uh, but this is very good skiing. I mean, you can just see the platform she's standing on, her line down the hill. It's all really excellent. Especially in the slalom. She has such a touch on when to initiate. She never just throws them sideways. And again, for a 17 year old to know exactly what she has to do over that knoll, she takes care of business, takes care of line, and she's got the lead. Yeah, that was really good. I was gonna say, when she came over that knoll, like she just kind of absorbed the skis up into her body as she kind of crested over. So basically what that allowed her to do is not lose contact with the snow, keep her ski surface on the snow and keep her down the hill while also keeping her body down the line. She's very young here. I believe she's like 17. How old is Michaela Schiffer now? Okay, so she's 29 years old now, so that would, she would have been 18. They say that like, oh, how does she know what to do and how does she do this? At Berkman Academy, they take so many runs, you don't always realize it when you're skiing on the chairlift, like, oh, well, I'm taking five, six, seven runs, that seems like a lot. At Berkman Academy, you have a designated race hill. Most places, if you're a race program, you have to like go and say, hey, we'd like the race hill for this afternoon, or we'd rate, like to use the race hill here, and then the mountain closes it off. Burke Mountain Academy at one point owned Burke Mountain. A little, little 
unknown history of Brookmount Academy. For a while, they actually owned the mountain. The mountain went into foreclosure, so it went to the highest bidder, and that happened to be the ski academy there, Brookmount Academy or BMA. BMA bought the mountain and, you know, ran it, essentially, ran all the operations, and then they sold it, and when they sold it, part of their contract was that they got exclusive rights to the training hill. The training hill, Brookmount Academy has first dibs on it, they have unlimited access to it, they have a warming hut and where they store the gates and everything. You cannot, like public access to the training hill is not allowed unless you're racing or unless you're just using it briefly, but ski racers there have the right of way. The other thing, is with that training hill, you have a high speed Pama. So inside of an hour, you if you really pushed it, you could get nine or 10 runs. It's that quick turnaround. And not only that, when you're going up the hill, it's easy for coaches to pass gates to one another. So like I've done it where I unloaded the gates halfway to the coach and they can kind of set the course really quickly. It also allows athletes to do inspections of the course as they're going up. It also allows athletes to watch other skiers my high school trained there, so I trained on that training hill. I mean, my entire life, basically. God, since I was four, no, since I was six. So for 12 years, I just trained on that same hill. And it's very solemn. It's like a solemn hill if you do it from the bottom half. It's GS if you do it from the top. Though they don't typically go all the way to the top. But anyway, you're training on this. You're watching people go. It is a very intense training scenario. and athletes that train on that hill get a ton of mileage. So when he says things like, oh, well, how does Michaela know all this stuff just intrinsically at 18? If she started at BMA, a lot of time they have an eighth grade program, so she would have been there when she was 13 until she was 18. You have five years on that hill and you're training for four hours every day. Usually they'll do double sessions. They'll do a session first thing in the morning, take a break, do lunch, do training like um, dry land training or weightlifting and then you have another session in the afternoon it's crazy intense and let's say you train for three hours if you're really pushing it you could get 20 let's say they're getting like 20 runs in the morning conservatively and 20 in the afternoon it is just a ton of mileage on the course and a ton of mileage on like very consistent terrain, but it has like a fall line at part way through. It has like a, what they call coach's knoll where it rolls over. It's just a very technical hill. It's very firm, it's well groomed. It's designated just for racing. It's hard packed snow and ice. So you get really strong. You have to keep your skis tuned. When people say stuff like this, I'm like, okay, you're not aware of kind of this ski culture that exists in Northern Vermont where you just get a ton of reps. It's part of why the Cochrans are really good. They only have a tiny hill, but it has a rope toe and they get a lot, bunch of laps. It's not only good because it's Northern Vermont, so the season is longer and the access to snow is better, but it's also just a culture centered purely around racing and kind of the general public is secondary, at least on that hill. Like the general public has the chairlift in other parts of the mountain. But you get a ton of mileage, a ton of experience, and if you were familiar with that, you would know that. Not anything against the guy commentating. I mean, that's a subset. But for you at home, if you're interested in that, if you're interested in ski racing culture and Vermont ski culture, that's where it comes from. That's how I got burnt out so quick as a kid. <laughs> I only made it to like 12 and I was like, this is too much, man. <laughs> you know, you got like adults giving you coaching on video. It's like, all right. <laughs> I'm just gonna go snowboard in the woods for a while. But anyway, that's just me making something that's not about me about me. Let's go back to the video. I love watching Michaela ski. Her fundamentals are great. Her slalom is great. Her timing is perfect. And um, her race IQ is high. Like she knows when to kind of take in her knees. She knows when to set up her line and when she really needs to pin it. And it takes a very smart racer. That's one thing I don't, here talked about a lot. I think race tactics wise, Michaela might be the smartest racer I've seen. Um, Bodhi was also very high. He's just like very aggressive with his line, so he'd take risks other people weren't, and he was able to kind of identify those things. Michaela is really disciplined in like, I don't need that speed there, but I need the speed at this lower part of the hill, so I'm gonna set up for it. All right, let's keep going. Bib number 10 with the lead. Michaela Schiffer, and she's won some World Cup slalom runs in her life. Not a first run, though. She just keeps it going, and you know what she does well is she's she Every looks thing. at a race, everything. She looks at a race, and it's just a... 
God, if I wait for this guy to finish his sentence, the slalom race is gonna be done. You know what she does really good? When you see her kind of look conservative, she's like keeping her tempo, keeping her rhythm, having herself set up. And then when you see her just like snap like this and it's instant, that's her saying, I need speed in this part of the course and I'm just gonna take it. Her being more conservative and flowy, that's her saying like, okay, I need to set up my line. I need to be in the right spot of the hill. And her just going like boom, 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 boom. You see it, you saw it like there just a second ago. That's her saying, I need speed in that exact part of the course. It's something Bodhi was fantastic at. I know I saw an interview recently where she said Bodhi was kind of her idol, and I can see why. Like, she, as a tactician, is very, very intelligent. Another training run. She does exactly what she does in training. She's solid, she knows the course, she thinks about the course, not what happens after. She doesn't think about results, she thinks. Oh my god, this guy has not stopped yapping since her like second turn. Okay. You see exactly what she did there too, where she was coming across the hill more. That was like a specific choice where she's not getting a ton of speed coming that far across, but she's gonna set up and then look. Look at this course. It ends with a hairpin. Like I've told people before, hairpins are, if you have two gates and you need to clear, you have to like basically clear through these two gates. You have to break the plane and you turn them sideways. You have to break the plane. A lot of times coaches or the course setters or the race referee, whoever, they like to set little technical things before the end because it makes it very dramatic. Cause if you crash right before the end, oh, they could have won it. It's, I don't know. <laughs> Ski coaches are kind of drama queens, low key, but she was basically setting up through those harder turns up um, above because you can see kind of that steeper part of the hill so that she could carry her speed through that hairpin because that's where it really matters. If you have to go wide on a flat, you've basically lost all of your time and you've blown that run or you've blown the race. So she's very smart. If she looks like she's skiing very in control and very kind of withheld, there's a reason. There's a reason because she needs her speed to get through that hairpin because she's not going to blow a whole run just on the hairpin. It's so smart. Tina Mays, five, okay, let's see. It's about how to ski. A little piece of perfection it was, and out of bib number 10, 17-year-old Michaela Schifrin, 10 years the junior of Tina Maze, goes in the lead. She is just 17 years old, and after the first run, 1,500s off the lead, but Tina Maze just made her job very difficult. So Schifrin. See how she totally is just attacking straight through that? She's grabbing that speed there. It's a very different scheme. Uh, first and second run are very different things too because your first run is like, I just need to get on the board and be within striking range of other places. So like, uh, if you go all out first run and you only have like a two tenth lead, then you could blow that in the second run. If you're conservative, like fast but conservative, you could say, okay, now I'm one tenth from the leader, but I can go all out in the second run. If you blow the first run, you don't know what you're kind of doing and you're playing your cards too soon. You want to typically have a good solid first run because that creates a platform then for your second run to be really aggressive. But she, I mean, you can see her skiing. She's on a whole different gear on the second run. This task is just replicate training. Keep it simple. Worry about the results later. Charging. She yeah, you see that inside clear? She's like, I don't have to have the tightest line here. I just need to be able to get through it cleanly. And when you go over a knoll like that, you can't see over the top. Obviously you have some of that memorized, but that inside clear was very deliberate because it's like, okay, I'm gonna come across the hill because I need to make sure I'm not going out into the bramble with all the speed that she's carrying. Um, it's very, very smart. It can look a little weird to the outside viewer, but it's very smart. Also, I know I'm doing React, so I'm probably yapping more than these guys, but I can pause it. They are yap, 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 yapping all the way through her run. Without talking about any of the technical stuff, they're just like, they're like armchair sports psychologists here. Oh yeah, you gotta do it like you did it in practice. <laughs> Shut up. God. Talk about the skiing, it's so good. That inside clear was so smart. And now she can like set up her turns and carry it through the more technical parts. I would guess too, like it almost looks like a GS turn cause she's coming across the hill. Talk about that stuff. Not the sports psychology. You just gotta do it like you did in practice. That's something you would tell her at the top of the hill, not <laughs> while you're commentating. Anyway, it's weird, I don't know. I was out of the gate and such a sense of when to let go of that ski and let the speed take over. Finding time. Upper body. 
Yeah, see how much more aggressive she is? Also, she did that inside clear, set up for it so that she could just carry that speed in a straightforward line. So she gave up time when she kind of did that inside clear, came across the hill, and now she's set up perfectly to just run through. It's so beautiful. It's beautiful skiing. It's very smart. It's high IQ stuff. God, I gotta watch these videos on mute almost because the commentators are driving me nuts, but okay. Stoic, in control, but look at the action. Look at the energy in that lower body. Ooh, that was a sweet move. Did you see that? Where she like came across the hill of speed right after I unpaused it and then she just like stepped down on that foot and set herself in a different direction down the fall line. Ooh! Ooh! That was beautiful. Chef's kiss. Oh my god. That takes a lot of strength. That takes a lot of reps. That takes a lot of skiing on ice because they definitely keep these ski hills firm. Ooh, I like that. That was a nice turn. Because every turn is beautiful and she's got like this nice thing set up, but when you change like direction down the fall line and you just stand on that foot and set it a different direction while maintaining your balance while setting up each of these turns, mm, that is good. Not to mention like the ruts that form from other skiers. She kind of took her own line there. Uh, that was cool. Out in the second run yesterday in the giant slalom. Doesn't seem to be bothering here today. A little bit low there, but building. Michaela Schifrin. Okay, can I just say, one thing I don't like about the like angle of looking up the hill is that I can't see what gate she's setting up for. Cause that's a lot of the beauty of how Michaela skis. Her fundamentals and everything else are stellar, but man, I really like the way she sets things up and I can't see it. I get that it's more suspenseful, like, oh, there's a surprise hairpin that the camera couldn't see, you know, but it's a little jarring. I wish I could see a little bit more down the hill. Like, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> get a guy with like a big camera on his skis following her, but I like whenever I see Michaela ski like down the hill, I like seeing the way she sets things up. It's really cool. It's really masterful. Moving in front of the pace set by Tina Maze. Oh, that was sweet. Very quick. The edge to edge through that hairpin. And Schifrin has gone. Oh, Good man. Lord. Yeah, and see what I was talking about with that. Now they have a flush where they've got two sets of hairpins on top of each other. Um, that was beautiful, though. She set it up, didn't just kind of wiggle her way through the finish there. That was a beautiful, beautiful line, beautiful scheme. Fundamentals were great and, and it's crazy to think about how she can set her direction with just like a little maneuver like that very strong skiing Also, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I did not know that's how you said Tina Maze. I thought it was Tina Mays <laughs> My bad. I'm just a dumb American. I don't know how to say things God. <laughs> Okay Look at the lead So what could be sweeter than that? Well, for the Swedish crowd that enjoyed that run, they got one more in the gate. Oh, Schifrin building throughout that entire run. Never got behind except for maybe two turns, but recovers well and finishes so strong into the finish. I mean, I think a lot of the turns she got behind on, it was important to do for the line. I didn't see anything where she like let the course get out from under her, let her skis get onto the tails. Uh, also, that inside clear that they did slow-mo on, oh my god, I loved it. It was such a smooth move because then she set up for the pole plant and just dialed it in. I love it. Love it! It is a rock fight. Michaela Schifrin looking for her first victory. So is Hans daughter. Who gets it? Schifrin! Michaela Schifrin, 817, youngest American ever to win a World Cup. Yeah, it's you. Disbelief on Schifrin's face. A couple newcomers to the top. Uh, Hans' daughter is skiing like beautiful as well. Very different style, very European style. Um, and you could tell like she looked a little desperate. I don't know if there was a hiccup that they didn't show at the top. She wasn't far behind Michaela, but you could see like those moves at the end were kind of desperation. Any speed I can scrape together. Wow, this was cool. Oh my god, and Michaela is what? What did they say? 17? So young so young to like have that kind of discipline, have that kind of foresight. Um, 
kudos. It makes a lot more sense now why she's been so dominant because like even at an early age, she was a very smart athlete. You get people who are talented, but this kind of race IQ is like once in a generation. Holy moly. I think that there's two things that you see with Michaela that's different than your, I don't know, typical American ski racing athlete. One is the race IQ is insanely intelligent. I don't know if that just comes from mileage or what, or she's just naturally like very smart about thinking tactics wise, but it's clear that she's got a good eye for it. Two, the athleticism. I think it's gotten better even since then, but she is insanely strong. If you follow her on social media or any of these other things, she's insanely disciplined with her weight training program, with her exercise. And because of that, she's just avoided a lot of long-term damage to her legs, and it seems like she's having a really long career. Granted, she's younger, so it's apples and oranges, but that's really impressive. I, you know, we haven't seen that kind of commitment to physical fitness in the ski world, I guess since Lindsey Vaughn. So that's cool, and she's kind of like this once in a generation mixture of athleticism mixed with high IQ race strategy. Now, I know it's primarily in slalom, but slalom is where you can kind of see it showcased the most because it's so quick and it's everything's happening so fast and those split second decisions are really critical and her ability to do that is just off the charts amazing. So, this was a cool video. I'm glad I watched this. Uh, this was a cool run. It's nice to see her not just dominate too. Like, she was really, I mean, that's a lot of time ahead being three tenths of a second, but you've gotten kind of used to her being like second or two ahead of fields. Not always, but sometimes. And it's cool to see her first rise where she was still kind of like fighting in that field. I loved it. I loved watching this. So I don't know what else there is to say. This was really cool. And hopefully you enjoyed it. That's the end of the video. But if you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. That's a free way you can help the channel. We also have memberships and everything. Um, I'll also list below my affiliate codes for the ski gear that I use, but you know, that stuff doesn't really matter. Just thank you for being here. Thanks for taking the time. I hope you enjoyed this kind of content. I know it's a little bit different, but something I enjoyed and something I wanted to share with you. So as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and per usual, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.